From the heights of fame to rock bottom, you had a very long way to fall. Welcome to Kids Say the Funniest Thing. In the late 90s, Michael was still riding high as Mr. Primetime. He'd also found new love with 24-year-old city broker Sean Davis. Love is the answer. Sean was an absolute pucker sweetheart. He really was. Well, I'm here in the heart of Scotland with Michael Barrymore and his 24-year-old partner, Sean Davis. At the end of all those storms that he'd been through, I just thought, oh, gosh, he's found home at last. His and Sean's plans were they wanted to adopt. Do you mention children there? Then the process going through, but when the circumstance is right, yes, I would. Michael said if the time is right, you can't... I think there's got to be that quality time as well with the kids. Sean had calmed him down a bit, although if he was determined to drink and, and take substances, then you can't control that. No one really controlled Michael. Michael controlled Michael. But in late 2000, after two years together, Sean and Michael split up, and Michael got together with estate agent John Kenny. Three months later, after a night out clubbing, they invited a group of men and women back to Michael's house for a party. It was all quiet at Michael Barrymore's home today. On Friday night, he'd been at the Millennium Club in Harlow with friends. But just hours later, 31-year-old Stuart Lubbock was found unconscious in Barrymore's swimming pool. As the story unfolded, a post-mortem revealed severe internal injuries to the dead man. Couldn't take it in at first, what on earth was going on. A horrendous situation for everyone. It just escalated and escalated. Michael's behaviour on the night was also under scrutiny. When I found out that Michael had run away, I knew that was the wrong thing to do, um, having worked for the police for 25 years. The detectives investigating the death of Stuart Lubbock on March the 31st have made three arrests this morning. The police arrested Michael's boyfriend and another man on suspicion of murder and then released them without charge. Michael was also arrested and cautioned on drug offences. Stories crept out bit by bit. Drink and, and drugs had been found in Stuart Lubbock's blood. And Fleet Street, this was a bean feast, I'm afraid. In 2002, there was an inquest where Michael abstained from comment. Barrymore exercised his right not to answer questions about drugs at the inquest. Now remember, this is the guy, the star, that had always been open, friendly to everybody. The coroner recorded an open verdict. I've been unable to determine how exactly Stuart came to his death. With the case still open, in 2006, Essex police launched a second inquiry, eventually arresting Michael and two other men from the night on suspicion of serious sexual assault and murder. We remain committed to finding out the truth of what happened that night. Someone knows, and I hope their conscience to do the right thing will eventually prevail. I've been asking for years for this to be done and uh, to bring it to a conclusion, essentially for uh, Stuart's family and for myself. All three were released without charge. But the damage to Michael's career seemed irreversible. I'm not sure there's ever been a fall like it from someone who was loved, a father's son, and a dad died. And that brings its own tragedy. And uh, I know Michael feels that. I know he feels that. I heard that he was on suicide watch. So I went down, and it was just awful. It really was. Because. I just felt so sorry for him. I really did. And I thought, he was just a broken man. He really was. Tough to watch. Mm. A good friend of yours talking that way about you. So friend, yeah. I mean, talk me through what happened that night. I, People were drinking, taking drugs? They were all having drinks. They said, oh, can we go in the jacuzzi? So I said, yeah, I've got to put the lights on, because otherwise you won't see where we're going. And then I went out of there and had a joint. And as we walked out, I looked down, and there's a Stuart uh, floating in the pool. And whether he's floating... Like, yeah, when you see that, it's, it, you know, it's a very surreal thing to see. And what, what went through your mind? I just went into a bit of shock. I just 
went, oh, Christ. And, you know, it's quite obvious he wasn't moving much. The first thing I did when I said it was run back into the house and get help from Jonathan, who I knew had lifeguard uh, experience. They came out and started resuscitating him. I ran back... You know, this is something I want to clear up. I did not flee the house. I did not flee and suggest I was running away. I phoned Mike Brown, my PA, my personal assistant, and I said, there's been a problem at the house, told him what had happened. It's going to be surrounded by a press. Yes, I should have stayed. I should have said, no, I don't need to be here. But we can all do should-haves after the event. Mm. And yes, I should have. I didn't. And I, I'd, I'd, I'd like to, I'd like to, if you could bear with me. This is a copy of the letter. This letter, do you mind if I read it? Sure. And this is from the Crown Prosecution Service. I've never read this out or brought this out before because it's only come to light. The 10th of the September 2007. There was no evidence upon which to charge any person either for the death of Stuart Lowbury or the injuries he sustained to his rectum. Michael Parker, me, has an alibi from three people in the period immediately prior to the discovery of Stuart in the pool. I therefore conclude that there is insufficient evidence against all three suspects for there to be proceedings concerning the death of Stuart Lubbock or relating to the injury. The truth about this, Michael, isn't it, is that we may never know the truth. Yes. You were there. What do you take responsibility for? I was responsible for allowing people to come back to my house and uh, go out to the pool. You would assume I was capable of looking after themselves. I mean, I understand how you feel and the passionate way that you defend yourself. But I guess objectively... But if I don't defend myself, no, no, you know, I've got people that go around... I get it. I ...making get it. all sorts of allegations. I get it. But what I would say is this, that you... I, I guess you have to start, don't you, from the position that this young man, this father of two kids, no, lost getting his to, life. No, hang about. I'm getting to that. You haven't let me finish. Right. That family deserved proper answers, OK? No parent should have to bury their young. I had nothing to do with what happened to Stuart I am innocent. I am not 99.9% .9 innocent. I am 100% innocent, and I am entitled to walk around with my head held high for the rest of my life. But let me ask you this, Michael. How do you think Stuart died? I think he drowned. There are still some people, for whatever reason, that don't believe it. What do you say to them? I have to go around and live my life. If they've got anything to say to me, they can say it to me personally. Mm. And I'll give them an answer personally. Finish, do you please. believe there are people out there that know the answer? Well, I have to, because there's no answer anywhere else. And yet all that's happened over all these years is that it was convenient, you know, and, and some of the journalism. You, put, you showed one of the headlines there, gay orgy. How do you have a gay orgy with four girls and uh, five blokes, three of them are straight? How do you? Stuart uh, was found with various drugs in his body and you were asked directly if you had facilitated him taking drugs and you yeah. declined to answer. What was the truth about that? Well, I, I didn't facilitate him taking drugs, but um, no, you can't, I was advised that by, the, by, by my lawyers at the time. You don't have to answer in a, in, in, in a coroner's call. You can just... I said, well, why don't I just say, I, you know, I didn't. But again, with hindsight, do you... I mean, I... I you I see that, that... No, I... I, I yes, I, but I took... I can, you can see lots of things in hindsight. Yeah. I'm not making excuses. No, no, but I'm saying the reason that the I fucked up. What more do you want? I fucked up. I get it. And somebody you know, died. I'm sorry. Yeah. I couldn't be more sorry. Mm. Well, Look, Stuart will never get his life back, but you will never get the comfort of this being resolved, because it's hard know. to see how it will be. But I have to live in hope that it, somehow, somewhere, there will be an answer. Yeah. I, I, I hope it's in my time, whatever's left of my life.